Hey, what's up? Tech Pro Charlie here, and welcome back to where we take awesome out of the box. Now, today we're going to be doing a full review on the new OnePlus Nord CE 5G. One of the most hyped up mid-rangers from last year was definitely the OnePlus Nord. And now we have another in the form of the OnePlus Nord CE 5G. But does it set itself apart from other mid-rangers? Or does it have the same DNA as its older brother? Let's find out. We have a really nice looking box. Holographic to boast branding, it looks minimalist, modern, and I'm a huge fan of how OnePlus packages their phones. On the back we have more details and overall the packaging gives it a really premium feel. Inside, we get the phone right away, pero mahamaya na yan. Because under that, we have the paper packaging containing the paperwork which you should never throw away, SIM ejector tool, stickers, jelly case, then below that, you have the charging brick and the red USB-C cable. Hooray for USB-C and red is my favorite color. Dapat nag-red pala ako sa video na to. And the package is pretty packed too, save for earphones so you're gonna have to buy your own. The OnePlus Nord CE 5G has a really nice back panel and we got ours in blue void. And it's nice, matte, and does a really good job against fingerprints. But if you want to protect that plastic build, you're going to want to use the silicon case that comes with the package. It has a geometric pattern on it, which I'm not really a fan of. I just think the back panel looks nice, so it's weird that you're going to have to cover that with a geometric pattern. On the left, we have the SIM card tray and volume rocker, while on the right, we have the power button. And below, we have the speakers, 3.5mm jack, and USB-C port. No stereo speakers here, so I really suggest using your own headphones. Plus, the sound coming from the one speaker sounds a little bit tinny and, well, you'll have to hear it. So here's the sample. Moving on, for the front, we have a 6.43 inch fluid AMOLED 90Hz display. AMOLED means that we'll get nice colors and deep blacks, and of course, an in display fingerprint scanner. Plus, we have a full HD plus resolution here, so you know things will look sharp. And to top that off, we have a 90Hz refresh rate. This is a great compromise to check out both good battery life and interface smoothness. And you'll see that in our battery results later too. Overall, it was a treat watching media on this, but again, best use headphones. Now for cameras, we have a 64 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide, and 2 megapixel depth sensor. I did go around unbox greenhouse and hung out with the tech mods, so you're gonna see some familiar faces. Overall, I was happy with the photos, but that could be because of the great lighting at the store. Though there are some instances where things can get overexposed. Now for the selfie camera, we have a 16 megapixel snapper. Again, I was okay with the photos, and they're definitely Instagram worthy. But some are overexposed, and some quick snaps were out of focus because of the lack of OIS. But if you know the quirks of the cameras, you should be able to take great shots. but maybe stick to well-lit scenes because it's a bit muddy under low light or at night. As for video, we can shoot 4K 30 and 1080 60, which should be more than enough for a regular user.
My comment though is that the auto exposure, for selfie videos at least, doesn't track well on video and I had to constantly tap on my face to get it properly lit. Inside, we have a Snapdragon 750G 5G paired with 8GB RAM and 128GB storage. Performance-wise, it does its job as a mid-ranger. It shares the same DNA as the original Nord and it sort of shows with the benchmarks. The Snapdragon 750G wins in single-core and multi-core, but the 765 is still better in GPU and productivity tests. Overall though, the difference is not as big as the model number says. Now for games, Call of Duty, NBA, and Wild Rift run pretty well. So yes, you can use this for gaming. You can also play Genshin here, but you're gonna run into some quick hiccups. Genshin is a demanding title after all, so I'm not really surprised with the performance. Now keeping the phone alive is a 4500 mAh battery, and Oxygen OS works this really well. Cause like I mentioned earlier, the 90Hz display gives good smoothness while being gentle on the battery. It lasted us 17 hours and 9 minutes, not bad at all. And you can get a full charge in about 2 hours with a 30 watt charger. So there you have it, the OnePlus Nord CE 5G does a really good job in generally all aspects. I say again. Good, but not the best. It doesn't really excel in a specific mark, so I guess you could say it's a jack of all trades, master of none. Which isn't a bad thing. If you're looking for a camera or gaming focused phone, there are better options out there for more competitive prices. But if you're looking for a mid range phone with 5G that checks out all the boxes, plus it has Oxygen OS, one of my favorite OS's, it's definitely worth the look. The 8GB 128GB model is priced at 16,990 pesos, while the 12GB 256GB model is priced at 19,990 pesos. You guys can check out more reviews in unbox.ph. Also, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Yup, subscribe because you need 250,000 subs. We're giving away a smartphone, so don't forget a hashtag sub to unbox. Hit the notification icon if you want to get updates when you drop videos. Once again, it's your tech bro Chalo, and I'll see you guys in the next one.